Underground to Canada by Barbara Smucker. Chapter 18. There was barely time for Julily and Liza to look about the cabin when three raps were heard on the door and the captain's voice whispered, A friend with friends. Open the door, lassies. There's trouble aboard. Julily turned the lock. The captain's face puffed with anger. I've had word there's a slave hunter and sheriff coming aboard with a warrant to search the schooner before we set sail. He peered closely at the girls. I have a notion that you're the lassies they're making all the stir about. He picked up their bundles and hurried them out of the door. They ran down the narrow corridor and up the winding stairs. It was nearly dark on the open deck. Firefly-looking lanterns bobbed here and there. The wind was full of the smell of fish, and it was cold. The girls ran with the captain across the deck to the far side of the schooner, where a little lifeboat covered with canvas hung against the side. The captain pulled back the canvas and helped Julily and Liza inside. You'll find, you'll find blankets, water, and a bite of food in there. Take care and pray that the good Lord will protect ye. He pulled down the canvas and left them alone. The girls shivered. They felt about for the blankets and crawled under them, partly for warmth and partly for protection. We're going to jump into the water, Julily said solemnly, if that sheriff comes near this little boat and takes the canvas off the top. Liza clutched Julily's shoulder. We're never going back to be in slaves ever again. It was a pledge between them. They were near the end of their journey. Massa Ross had said that Canada and freedom were on the other side of Lake Erie. There was no more walking through the woods or climbing mountains or hiding in the wet swamp. After all our trials, Liza, Julie said slowly, anything is better than going back to slavery. There was a small opening between the canvas and the top of their little boat, and the girls found that by looking through it, they could see onto the deck. People walked aboard with baskets and bundles in their arms. Sailors pulled at ropes and lifted rolls of heavy white cloth. Near the plank where the people came on board, the captain stood scowling, his cap still pulled down over one eye, and his mustache looking stiff and forbidding. The girls kept their eyes on him. Two large men shoved their way up the plank and approached him. They could be the sheriff and the slave hunter. Julily and Liza didn't know. They had never seen them before. The men spoke to the captain, waving their arms in his face and pacing pacing impatiently up and down beside him. They seemed like horses pawing the ground, wanting some kind of action, but the words they spoke were lost to Liza and Julily in the wind and the splashing noise of lapping water. The captain shook his head. He threw his arms into the air as though in despair. He walked towards the thin stairway. The big men followed. They're going to search the cabins, Liza, Julily gasped, realizing just how lucky their escape had been. We're going to get to Canada. If we've got to hang on to the bottom of the boat and get pulled across Lake Erie. Julily was angry now. What right had these men to keep chasing them right up to the border, as if they were two runaway dogs? She and Liza were not going to be slaves no more. It was night now. The gray fringes of daylight had slipped from the sky. Dark clouds foamed and raced above the Mayflower. Then they parted, and a half moon dazzled the schooner with yellow light. The the North Star shone above with radiant steadiness. A bell clanged, and the boat swayed impatiently as though eager to break away from the shore. The captain and the two large men popped out of the stairway. They heaved and puffed and ran to the entrance plank. They shook their fists in the captain's face, but he shoved them onto the plank and waved goodbye. The Mayflower turned. It swung around into the wind. Their sails high above began cutting through the water. I feel that I'm flying through the sky, just like those sails. Liza hugged Julily as they both pushed a wider opening in the canvas so they could see more of the outside. The joy that Julily felt was so intense that there was pain around her heart. Liza, Julily said finally, Mammy Sally is watching that same North Star. I've got to keep myself from hoping too much, but I'm hoping that it's led her to freedom too. Liza began feeling about for the bundle of food and flask of water. The girls ate and drank all of it. They drew the blankets close around them and watched the billowing sails catch the rushing wind. Without wanting to, they slept in the hollow shelter of the small lifeboat. When the captain found them later, peaceful and warm, he left them to rock through the night and he refreshed for the morning and be refreshed for the morning. A crisp, bright morning came quickly with thin, white frost powdering the deck. The air was strong with fresh fish smells. They mixed with the land smells of pine and pungent walnut bark and fertile earth still warm from summer. The waves on Lake Erie lapsed into gentle ripples. Sails were pulled in, and the Mayflower drifted ashore. Julily and Liza woke with the sudden stillness of the schooner's landing. They grasped each other's hands for comfort 
once, at once remembering the Mayflower, Lake Erie, and their nearness to Canada. They pushed up the canvas on their little boat, and the bright sun showered over them. The captain ran towards them, shouting with his trilling R's and upturned sentences, Ahoy! He waved for the girls to join him, all passengers ashore. He grabbed the girls by their arms and ushered them down the plank to the shoreline. He pointed to rows of tall, silent trees all and the long, bleak shore. See those trees, he shouted. They grow on free soil. Julily and Liza ran down the plank and jumped to the ground. Canada the crate together? The captain nodded. Liza dropped to her knees. She spread out her arms and kissed the ground. Bless the Lord, I'm free, she cried. Julily stood as tall and straight as she could. She pulled the cap from her head and held her head high. There was no longer any need to hide her black skin. She was Julily, a free person. She was not a slave. Thank you, Lord, she said aloud. She filled, filled her lungs as full as she could with the air of this new free land. No one else was near them except the captain, who was wiping tears from his eyes and blowing his nose. But he seemed nervous and jumpy and kept watching each passenger who walked from the schooner. Ye are safe now, he said warmly to the girls, and it does me heart good to have brought ye here. Then he lowered his voice, but ye must remember that I must go back to Ohio this very day. I can't be getting myself arrested for helping slaves escape to freedom, and I can't be revealing that I'm a conductor on the Underground Railway, even though my part of the train goes on top of the water. He laughed suddenly. Julily looked at the captain with new admiration. In her great joy to be standing on the soil of Canada, she had forgotten how this man was risking his job and maybe his life to bring them across Lake Erie on the Mayflower. Liza and I will never forget how you and all the people of the Underground Railway helped us, Captain, Julily said. She wanted to give him something, but her bundle was limp and empty. Liza seemed not to hear them. She was still kneeling on the ground praying. I'm giving ye a little money from Mr. Ross, said the captain awkwardly, shoving some paper bills into Julily's hand. Far down the shore there is a colored man with a cart waiting to take ye and your friend to the, count, the town of St. Catharines. Mr. Ross arranged it. Your cousin Lester has a job in that town, and he'll take care of ye for a bit. Julily looked quickly down the long stretch of rocks and sand and ran beside the lapping blue water and the great Lake Erie. And sure enough, there was a man with a cart waiting beside one of the roads.